my programs always center around youth that were born, raised here, and then go do something and come back and then tell us about it. So we can live our lives vicariously through the youth of our, our community. And it's my honor to have Haven McAlexander with us today. And she just got back from a trip to Honduras. And I'm excited to hear about it. So let's welcome Haven, please. Okay, thank you guys for letting me come in and enjoy lunch with you guys and hopefully get to share some great experiences with you. As Pat said, I'm Haven McAlexander, for those of you who don't know, and I am attending Miami University down in Oxford, Ohio. I'll be a junior this year. I'm studying pre-med, hopefully going to go be a doctor, but I have no idea what kind yet because there's about a bajillion different kinds of doctors I could choose from. So haven't gotten that far. But this past summer, I got to take a trip down to Honduras with a group that I'm involved with on campus called Global Brigades. So how the brigade works, or how Global Brigades works, is there's different chapters is what they call it. So there's Business Brigade, Water Brigade, Medical Brigade. There's all sorts of different ones that you can go on, but I'm involved with the Medical Brigade on campus. So at the beginning of the year, all of us members in the club, we vote between five different countries that we can go to. We had Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Panama, and Greece. Those were our five choices. So those are our partner countries. They have like an actual compound that we go and stay, and they've deemed the country safe enough for us volunteers to go down there, and they feed us, and take care of us. We have translators, coordinators that work with us throughout the year and then help us do what we need to do while we're down there. So my group voted on Honduras this year. So we went from May 22nd to 28th and the trip cost about $2,300, which was our donation goal that we had to reach. So I started out by writing a bunch of letters explaining who I was, who I was working with, you know, that sort of background information and what I was planning on doing in Honduras. And I sent that out to a bunch of local businesses here in Hicksville. And I received letters back from a lot of them with donations that they were giving me towards the trip. So our local businesses here actually funded a good portion of my trip to Honduras, which covered my flight, food while I was down there, and hospitality. And then also donation items. So we bought a bunch of like shampoos, conditioners, toothbrushes, that sort of stuff that we packaged up when we got down there and gave out to all of the people who came to the clinic. And then all of the remaining money that I earned actually went straight to the clinic. And it's going to help keep the clinic open as long as possible for the rest of the year while there's no volunteers there. So we arrived in Honduras on May 22nd. There was 11 of us from Miami University. And then at the airport, we met up with 17 other students from Oklahoma State University. And actually, there was a number of other colleges down there, but Oklahoma was like our partnering group. We worked with them throughout the week, which was really cool to meet other people who were in the same boat as us and kind of pursuing the same goals. That was really neat. So on our first day, we didn't really do a whole lot. We kind of went back to the compound, which was a three hour bus drive from um, the airport to the compound. And I don't know if any of you know what kind of road system they have like in a lot of these countries, but the trip took so long because their roads are just one giant pothole. We have little potholes around here, but that's nothing compared to the craters that they have in their roads. So all of our trips took super long, cause just because you have to be slow driving around everywhere. But we went back and then all of us kind of got in a group. We played some games, bonded, talked to each other, kind of everyone got to mingle and meet. We met our translators and our coordinators and you know our cooks and everybody else that was gonna be working with us through the week. So that's what we did on the first day. And then we also got together everybody's donation items that we brought and we packaged them into individual baggies. So each person would get shampoos, conditioners, sunblock, toothpaste, toothbrush,
just a whole bunch of like goodies that they might need for personal hygiene. And then those were given out on our clinic days to both adults and children. So then on our second day down there, we, all of us students, there was 28 of us in total, we drove about two hours to a different community. And when I say community, it's kind of like what we would think around here is like a neighborhood. It's just like a close knit group of houses where everyone kind of knows each other. So there's like different communities all over that we worked with. But we drove to this community and uh, students were split into groups of six, or six different groups. And we were paired with a family and a mason. And then we went back to the family's house and we worked with the mason to build a stove in each of these families' houses. Because a lot of the women down there, they end up with respiratory issues because they do most of the cooking inside of the homes, but they don't have very good ventilation in their homes. So we built brick uh, stoves that had a chimney to help release some of that smoke and you know, try to help with their respiratory issues that they end up experiencing. And that was a really rewarding thing because we worked like one-on-one -on -one with one family and got to play with their kids and their animals, whatever they had. We got to go inside of their homes and kind of just see you know, what living conditions the people are working with down there. And it was just really eye-opening to see, you know, you walk in and it's, a, it's two rooms. There's a kitchen slash dining room, and then there's a bedroom. And the family that we worked with, there was six of them, all in this one tiny little bedroom. I think they had like three cots on the ground, and that's what the whole family slept in. So that was really an eye-opening thing to get to go and experience. And then on our uh, third, fourth, and fifth days, those were our clinic days where we actually got to go and do like medical work. So we drove another like two and a half hours to a different community called Santa Cruz. And we stayed there for three days. It was actually in a school um, courtyard was where we did our clinics. And we had a number of patients just lined up at the door ready to receive care such as like medications for like blood pressure and different things like that. Or if they had like a skin issue, an illness, they got medication for it. And then we did things like pap smears and other exams. And then just basic routine stuff like throat swabs or urine testing, you know, whatever they needed. And then we also had a dental section where they did a lot of teeth pulling and then some just like routine cleanings. So we were there for three days, and over the course of those three days, we saw, I think it was 306 patients, which they said was the most they had ever seen in the course of three days. So that was really awesome. And it was really cool. We got to, like during our downtime, because we all like jumped around to different sections, but there was one section where we got to actually sit and talk to the kids. And we couldn't really understand each other. That was a little difficult, but we played all sorts of games like Hangman and uh, Duck Duck Goose, different things. That was a really fun experience to get to just hang out and laugh with these little kids. And then um, on our last day there, it was actually my favorite day. We, all of us girls in the group, the guys stayed back, all of us girls, we traveled to a different community and we had made like poster presentations and we brought a bunch of different like goodies and we talked to a group of about 25 young girls from I think age 9 to 15 and we talked to them about like feminine health and that sort of stuff but it was just really rewarding because at the end of it we asked how many of the girls had actually learned about this sort of stuff and only one of them raised their hand. I feel like here in America, we kind of, you know, teach that stuff. So that was just cool to maybe help them feel more prepared in the future and less scared for when they get to that point. So that was really neat. And they were all really happy and running around thanking us for our gifts that we gave them and our presentation and whatnot. So at the end of that day, we this was the first day we actually had free time. We went back and got to swim and just hang out. And we talked to the doctors, we all sat in the group, talked about our experiences, and kind of just got to reflect over, you know, this trip that we had gone on and the eye-opening experiences that we had uh, got to take part in. And we talked about just how grateful everyone is down there. It's like they have the most 
undying faith in God and just love and gratitude that they just shared with us. And it was just great to get to experience all that and then to reflect over it and see kind of what each of us volunteers had picked up on. And, you know, we all kind of took in different things. So it was cool to be able to go back and see just what everybody took in as a lesson. So that was kind of the basic of our basis of our trip. And we went home. It was sad to go home. Mm -hmm. But this next year, I will actually be president of the club. So I'll be in charge of setting everything up and kind of deciding where we're going and things like that. So I'm pretty excited about that. Do you guys have any questions? <coughs> These uh, stoves or chimneys you build, did they exhaust what they were cooking on inside to the outside, or did you actually build the whole thing on the outside? Can you repeat that? Makes sense? that? No. So you say they normally cook inside your house, yeah. that's why it's all smoky. Uh -huh. So did you build something for them that was totally outside the house, or did you just build a chimney to exhaust the smoke? Yeah, it's the stove was inside their house in like their little kitchen area, but there was just... I don't exactly know how it works, but they cook their food down in like this ash that we put in there, kind of down in there and it like traps the heat. And then there's a chimney that goes outside of the house to get the smoke out and everything. Dirt floors or did they? He, the family that I worked with, the, their house was actually made out of lime, like the powder. And it was just like mixed with water. If you touched it, it was like chalk it rubbed off on your hands, but that's what their whole floor and everything was made out of. A lot of the houses, though, were kind of just gravel or dirt on the ground, like com compact dirt. Yeah. What was their language? My first question. What language did they They speak use? Spanish down there. Is their religion primary Catholic, primarily? Um, I heard a couple of our translators were mentioning Catholicism. I'm not exactly sure what their like main religion is down there though. But I guess I didn't get to ask that. They just spoke very highly of God and they were all everything was God bless you and I don't know, they were very it was very great. Next question is uh, what is their political uh, are they democracy? Are they what do you know anything that was that not part of your nothing to do with the politics of the country. I honestly have no idea. We didn't really talk about any of that. Being like medical, we, I guess we just, the business, they probably deal a lot with that. And then there's also law. I'm sure they get to experience more of like their politics and that sort of stuff, but I'm not really sure. Last question. Of all the tests and everything, did you find that there was a lot of any one disease or medical problems in there? there with all the tests and everything you did. Yeah, two, there was two things that we saw a lot of. It was actually their flu season while we were down there. So that's why we did a lot of throat swabs. And their flu, it's not the same as it is up here. You know, we get like the stomach aches or just like common colds. Theirs was, I'm not, they had very different symptoms than we get around here. It's very different, but we had a lot of the flu and then we did a lot of H. pylori tests, which is just a finger prick. And that's like a stomach bacteria. It comes from like unsanitized water and different bacteria like that. So they actually, if they're able, a lot of them get tested for H. pylori every six months, I think it is, just because they don't have clean water down there. So they get a lot of like stomach bacteria and stuff. So we had quite a few positive cases of H. pylori that we treated too. A lot of the like bigger cities do have like actual hospitals, but like I said, from our compound to their community was a two hour drive. So it's not like here, you know, we just head on up to the Hicksville Hospital or emergency room or something like that. They have to travel hours and hours and most of them don't have cars. So they're traveling by horse or by bicycle. So it's just a lot more difficult for them to get there.
but they do have resources like that where they can go and get like more extensive medical help if they need it. We didn't see anything like that though at the clinic. Ours was more just like basic medical care. So I'm not exactly sure if we had saw somebody who was like very ill what they would have done, but I do assume that they would have tried to transport them to the nearest like big hospital. Did they test for COVID while you were there? No, no, no COVID testing. Are there doctors there all the time? Um, so the doc- there in a group like you come in and help with this? Or? The doctors that we worked with, they were only there for, so we were only there for about a week and they were there for three weeks. And then different doctors will come in. Because like I said, um, at the time that I was there, there was also like six other um, colleges that were there too. So there's a bunch of different community work and clinics going on. So like our doctors came in for three weeks, worked with us, and then they worked with other schools too. And then they'll come out and then new doctors will come in. I'm not sure if there's volunteer, like student volunteers there year round, because I know like I said, the rest of our funds go to try to keep the clinic open. So I think there is a period when there's no student volunteers, but the doctors do stay there as long as the clinic is able to be funded and kept open. What was your most memorable takeaway from that trip? Um, I think just, just their love and gratitude. It was just crazy to think about. Like here we have so much, I mean, we, I can't even think about how many opportunities we have here. And there they live in houses that are made from like tin roofing material or lime and things like that. But yet they are just so happy and so grateful. The kids are all running around happy. They don't know what they're missing out on. Even the adults, many of them have never left Honduras. They don't know like really what other opportunities are out there. And they're just so grateful for us to come in and help them and provide medical care and to play with their kids and hang out. And they just, they all were just so thankful. And you know, it was really a great feeling. Was that your first experience overseas? Yeah, um, I've been overseas, but this was my first like medical trip that I've been on. And it was really awesome. I'm excited for my upcoming years. Oh, what kind of food, she says. Um, every single day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we had some sort of rice, meat, whether it was like chicken or pork, and then um, tortillas. That was, and beans, lots of beans. That's what we had every day. And then for breakfast, they would usually switch out the rice for eggs. So uh, towards the end of the trip, though, I think they know that we're not uh, really accustomed to their food. So they did actually start giving us like cereal for breakfast. And they made pancakes one time. We had spaghetti, I think, on our last night there. So towards the end of it, they started giving us some more like American food, I guess. But yes, yeah, so they had uh, like those big jugs of water is what we drank from. I'm surprised you didn't mention fruit at all. Fruit? There's not fruit? They actually did. I guess I forgot about that. We had a lot of like papaya and um, we had juice too, which was, I think we had papaya juice, like hibiscus juice. It's not like the juices we have here. There was no apple juice or orange juice. It was, it was like, yeah, we had a lot of papaya and then um, hibiscus. Guava, I think we had guava one time. It was pretty cool though. It was cool to experience their food. I do like my burgers here, but <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Did you take any chewing gum or candy for the kids? Um, okay, so I personally took a big book of stickers, and then um, I took coloring pages for them. My group had to give a presentation to the kids about um, brushing their teeth, so we had to sing a song about brushing their teeth, and I printed out um, coloring pages with teeth on it, and the kids loved that. And one of my friends did bring suckers, but I had read in there, like, 
please don't bring candy. So I didn't, especially with giving a teeth brushing demonstration. I felt like candy might not be the best to give them, but. <laughs> I, I don't remember the song. I, it's in Spanish, so I made my uh, partner Sam. He actually spoke some Spanish, Spanish. I made him sing it. I let him do the embarrassing stuff, and I just sat and helped him color. I will not be singing today. Sorry about that. Any other questions? What do you see in them lacking? Is it you said they have a hard time with fresh water? I think the fresh water is the biggest thing just because um, not having clean water it does cause a lot of illnesses and they um, they have quite a bit of food I mean they, in each of their communities, they had kind of like what we would have, like a gas station or a convenience store here, where they could get like pop, chips, other things like that. They did have a good abundance of food, but the fresh water just causes so much sickness that it's hard to keep up, like sustaining the body. And I just feel like if they had a source of fresh water, their health would be a lot better. Uh, just a lot of things would be better for them, but I don't know <coughs> how soon that's going to happen. I know the water brigade does go in, and they actually, because a lot of them don't have <coughs> running water either, so it's hard to even get a source of water, but the water brigade went in to a lot of the communities, and they made, uh, they call them sanitation stations, so they have like a toilet and then they have a separate place for bathing and washing dishes and like drinking because a lot of them, you know, they bathe in the same water that they drink just because they don't have that source of water. So the water brigade, they made separate stations for each of that so that they have a source of water and they can get a somewhat cleaner water. But What's their bathroom facility? I don't exactly know how like the plumbing and that sort of stuff works, but it was just like a big, um, in the communities at least, it was like a big brick building and then on one side was like a toilet and then on the other side was a shower and then outside of the building was a place to wash hands and do dishes. But in the, where we had the clinic, um, which was at a school yard, but it was like a bathroom that we had. It looked like a bathroom we have here, but the toilets don't flush. You have to like pour a bunch of water into the toilet bowl, and then it kind of like pushes it through. So that's kind of what we were dealing with. Since you've been back, have you had anybody complain about how rough they have it here? Oh, <laughs> we all do. We all do. But Pretty yeah, it's crazy. Like to Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think I did. I guess I wasn't really looking around. We were pretty busy, but I didn't see any. Anything else? Thank you.